Okay, so today we only cover a very short portion of scripture, but I think that this is Holy Spirit led. It's important. It's the very first section of the Lord's Prayer. And so come come along with us. Come along with me. It's a really, really great couple words. You're going to like it. So let's jump in together and see what it says. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bible Time. Craig here. I am so pumped. This is one of my favorite passages. The Lord's Prayer. It is like, oh, man. I'm excited to be with you. It is like one of the most well-known, uh, quoted passages in the Bible, like other than John 3, 16. I mean, people know this thing. And by the way, people know the Catholic version of this thing, no matter what like Christian background you're from. It's very interesting how, uh, how pervasive one particular version, the sort of the old English version, you know, hallowed be thy name, though that type of wording and so um uh, does it matter well yeah it kind of matters and we'll talk about why but um it's just interesting how how pervasive that version is but i'm excited because it is well known um but there is it's also like so i wouldn't say misunderstood but just like not understood enough how about like that um there's just gold in this thing absolute gold and so anyway hey if you're new to, to bible time just want to let you know this is not really a place for me to teach although i share some thoughts along the way and some things that i share are beneficial in terms of, of teaching and understanding but my hope is that it's just in order to to further allow for you to seek god pursue god grow in relationship with god in an intimate way and so academic study has a place a very important place especially these days where truth is such so misunderstood and lies are so pervasive but um, for for devotional time and devotional reading I personally believe that there's a place where we set aside or at least put in the back seat academic study and put in the front seat pursuit of relationship and the reason I think that this is so important is because so many people myself included at times have made this academic accumulation of facts about the Bible to be some end goal when there was a point in my life where I accumulated so many facts about the Bible that I had, but I had completely bypassed relationship with the God of the Bible. And so both are important, but relationship with God is most important. And so that's the goal of Bible time. Thanks for joining me. We're jumping into Matthew chapter six, verse nine. And this in this gospel is the first time that the disciples have said, teach us how to pray. Something that last video we talked about is only something that you would do if you really truly had faith in God. And so this is what Jesus says. He says, pray then like this. Think it's interesting, maybe important that right off the beginning, um, it doesn't say pray, pray this exactly. It says pray like this so this is a pattern this is a form that's that's sort of setting in in my opinion not just like practically the words that you should say but more more importantly the heart with which you should pray the 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 motive and I would even say the passion and you'll see why in a second the passion the faith um, so much so it's a pattern you, you don't have to exactly pray these words every time you pray I mean obviously we pray about a lot of things and obviously Jesus knew that we would pray about you know food and, and clothing and you know whatever it might be but this is the the Lord's Prayer and it sets out this pattern for us that will serve us well no matter what we're praying for so it's a pattern for heart for passion for faith and he says, pray like this, okay? Our Father in heaven. We talked about this, I believe, yesterday or the day before. But it's important to remember that right off the beginning, uh, what you know, prayer is a relational thing. 
prayer prayer in its essence is a connection with a supernatural deity and there are many religions out there that whatever their connection with their deity or you know the deity that they believe in they don't believe that their connection is personal or intimate in nature we do so this is one of the things that sets us apart is that our father uh, the word is Abba he's he's an Abba he's like a daddy he's close to us in relationship he is relational in his nature his DNA is relationship and so um, Jesus right from the very beginning is teaching us to approach God, the God of the universe, the the one that created everything, the one that is holy, the one that is set apart, the one that is mighty, the one that is transcendent and omniscient and omnipotent, and he's all of these amazing, untouchable things. And yet, in this beautiful contrast of who he is in his amazing glory, he desires to reveal himself to humanity like a father a good father, close in nature, uh, pursuing us in relationship, taking care of us um, the way that a, a good daddy would. So he's not this distant deity. He's not just this, this angry warlord. He's not... He's a dad. And he loves you like that. And that's important for so many reasons. Um, just to understand the nature of God, but it's also important, maybe maybe really important in our generation more than many others in the past in a generation that is fatherless, that we have lost um, just like on the main stage of society, we've lost the utmost value for keeping the family intact, for a, a, mo a mother being a mom, and a father being a dad and the the important commitment that it takes when you say yes to somebody on an altar and marry them when you let your physical body come together with somebody in the god-given gift of sex that that it's supposed to be an an outward expression of an inward commitment that the whole point of why the Bible teaches to save sex for marriage is because sex is so important and its results are so important that the value of sex should only be wielded within the context of a lifelong commitment. That's why it's supposed to be for marriage. Uh, marriage is something that you step into when your insides are willing to commit to somebody for life. And when your insides are willing to commit to somebody for life, you have then earned the place of sharing that physical intimacy as well. And some of the fruit of that physical intimacy is other human beings being produced, right? And so, anyway, we've lost that in so many ways. And so, man, what's a practical takeaway? We need to fight for that. Number two, if you're giving yourself over to taking that gift from somebody else that you're not married to, you need to stop it. You need to repent right now. Uh, you need to confess and repent. Um, number three, if you are married or, and you have a child, or whether you're not married and you have a child, that you would try and reflect your parenting after our Heavenly Father because He's the great example and, and what He's done for us and pursuing us and loving us and chasing after us. It's, it's what we need to be. But when it comes to us and Him, it's how we need to recognize Him, that He is a good Father. Okay. So we're going to move on. Uh, but I just want... You know what? Forgive me for this. This is like probably the shortest one we've ever done. But I just feel like it's important. And you know what? If you want to keep reading, you, you should keep reading. But we're going to walk through this slowly. <laughs> we've done a half of a verse. And I think 
I'd like to just pause, I'd like to invite you to pause because so many people have issues with dads and and even if you don't have issues with your earthly dad, if we really sit and, and analyze it, some of us have issues, even if we had a good, even if we've had a good earthly father, we have issues with the heavenly father. And I think it's important enough to just pause for a few minutes. I actually wanna give you about five minutes in this video and put the timer up. And I wanna close in praying a blessing over you in regards to uh, both your earthly father um, or lack thereof and how you relate with your heavenly father but uh, I'd like to invite you please don't turn this video off before we get into the rest of the details I want to give you five minutes that you would that you would really seek the Lord and pray listen to the Holy Spirit and say hey do I view my heavenly heavenly father correctly and sometimes people get turned off by this idea of correct versus incorrect or theology. And I'm not really a theological person, but the truth is, if, we're, if we don't have our theology right, we're gonna think wrong. And if we think wrong, we're gonna believe wrong and we're gonna feel wrong and we're gonna interact with God wrong. And so theology and thought are actually really, really important in so far as they lead us to believe and engage with God rightly in relationship because relationship is the most important thing but we can't have a right relationship if we're believing wrong things about God or about what he has for us and wants for us and how he in, interacts with us and so this is what I want to leave you with and, and, and invite you to just jump into these just short five minutes of prayer that God is our heavenly father and he is a good father and if you've had a bad example of a father he is not that he loves you. He's for you. He, he literally gave his greatest gift to have you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. He wants to, he wants to be everything. That's like why he says, come to me like a little child. Because kids, they just want to be with daddy. They just want to squeeze his neck and hang on to him. And so I want to encourage you to consider and allow the Holy Spirit to point out to you is there any way that you like are viewing God wrong in any way that he maybe wants to minister to you and to change that? So let's go ahead and take five minutes and, and pray towards that right now.
Jesus, I just thank you for every person that's here still engaging in this Bible time and taking seriously this time of prayer. And for whoever it is that, that has made it this far, watching it, just the day that it comes out or in a year, wherever, whenever, Lord, I know that you can minister and transcend time and space and geography. And just pray for my brother or sister, whoever they are, whatever they've been through, first in regards to their earthly experience, either with a, a father that was present, or maybe they have never had a father at all, that you would touch those places in their heart. And if there's healing that's needed, that you bring healing. Maybe they did have a father that was just nasty, harmful, abusive, abs, I don't know, whatever it might be that, that you would bring healing that only you can bring to their heart and their life in regards to their experience with their earthly father. And Lord, if that's impacted the way that they, they view you, even maybe there's some that even when they hear the term heavenly father, they just cringe. They can't, they can't, they can't think about it right. Holy Spirit, that you'd bring healing in that area. And for every one of us, whether we had a, a good earthly dad or not, that we would view you right. That we would be able to see you with the eyes that recognize your character for who you really are. That when you speak, we'd hear you correctly. We wouldn't hear that nasty tone. We wouldn't hear you just being angry with us, but we would hear you with the loving voice that you speak with. Though it be sometimes discipline, it's always out of love. Lord, let us think about you right. Let us perceive you right. Let us respond to you rightly. We love that you're a good father, that you're a heavenly father that pursues us and runs to us even when we don't deserve it. We commit ourselves to you and ask that you lead us in this area of our heart and our life. In Jesus' name, amen.